is my guide, Atar is my guide, by the grace of Allah, Atar is my guide. My Murshid has changed millions of lives, the prophetic Sunnah, he has revived. The leader of the Sunnis, he is our pride, by the grace of Allah, Atar is my guide. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Dear Islam brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel Welcome back to this very informative silsila discourses of Attar. At the beginning of this silsila, try to make as many good intentions as possible to gain maximum rewards. For example, that I will listen to the silsila for the pleasure of Almighty Allah. I will note down all the important points and I will try to practice upon them. I will try to encourage them amongst my family members, my spouse, my children, even my society. In this manner, try to make as many good intentions to gain maximum thawab and rewards. Indeed, there are countless benefits and blessings in reciting durood and salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu Listen to this very beautiful narration regarding the benefit of reciting salawat and durood. Allama Abu Abdullah Muhammad bin Ahmad Maliki Qurtubi alayhi rahmatullah al-qawi has narrated once a woman visited the blessed court of Sayyidina Khaja Hassan Basri alayhi rahmatullah al-qawi and she requested. She said, My young daughter has passed away. Please let me know how I can see her in my dream. So he told her what to do. She then saw her deceased daughter in her dream. However, her deceased daughter was in a state such a state that she was dressed in very, very difficult and bad clothing. She had chains around her neck and her feet were tied together. Upon seeing this horrific scene, the mother began to tremble. The next day, she related that dream to Sayyidina Khaja Hassan Basri Ali, who got saddened upon hearing it. After some time, Sayyiduna Khaja Hassan Basri rahmatullah ta'ala ali saw a girl in his dream who was sitting on a throne with a crown adorned on her head. Upon seeing him, she said, I am the daughter of the woman who told you of my state. Sayyiduna Hassan Basri alayhi rahmatullah al-qawi then said, According to her, you are being punished by Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal how did this transformation take place? The deceased girl replied, A person passed by the graveyard and recited Salat and Durood upon the beloved Prophet ﷺ. And due to the blessings of his Salat ala Nabi, his Durood, the torment and punishment from 560 graves was removed. SubhanAllah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, from this we have learned that the recitation of Salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is the Rood Sharif, contains great benefits and blessings when it is recited by the tongue of a lover and obedient slave of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. It is possible that he is distinguished in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. That person that by virtue of his passing by the graveyard and reciting Surat al nabi the Rood Sharif, the punishment and adab of here 560 dead people is lifted, is removed. It is certainly beneficial to take the lovers of the Holy Prophet وسلم, to treat them very respectfully and Beneficial to take the lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi out of respect to the graves of your relatives and to request them 
to send Isa al-Thawab to them. What can be said about the blessings of the feet of the awliya Allah? Alihimur Rahmah. One Sayyiduna Shaykh Ismail Hadrami, Alihi Rahmatullahi Qawi, passed through a graveyard. He stood beside a grave and he began to weep. He began to cry intensely. After a short while, he began to smile. When he was asked as to why he did this, he said, I saw that the people of this graveyard, they were being punished. So I began to weep intensely and I made dua and I prayed to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal for their forgiveness. Then it was said to me, Go, we have accepted your shafa'ah, your intercession regarding these people. Having said that, he indicated towards a grave which had been made in the corner and he said, the woman in that grave said to me, O Faqih Ismail, I was a singer and a musician. Have I also been forgiven? I replied, Yes, you are also from amongst those who have been forgiven. This was the reason that I had smiled. Subhanallah. May Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy be upon him and may we be forgiven without accountability for his sake. Ameen bijahin nabil Ameen. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel The status of the blessed awliya Allah, the friends of Allah Azza wa Jal Is indeed amazing The states of graves, the condition of those who are in the graves Is apparent to the awliya Allah, rahimahumullah ta'ala They are able to converse even with the deceased people And punishment is lifted due to their supplications, their du'as and requests, subhanallah. If the people of the graves call out to them, that is the awliya Allah, then these blessed individuals hear them and help them, subhanallah. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us without accountability for their sake. We should also visit the graveyard and see the graves of the Muslimin, the Muslims. Because in fact, this is a sunnah. It is a means of remembering the hereafter, the akhirah. It is a means of forgiveness for oneself and it is a cause of benefit for the people in the graves. In this regard, there are three beautiful narrations and sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. One is, the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has stated, I had prohibited you, I had prohibited you from visiting the graves but now you should visit the graves because this is a means of becoming disinclined towards the world and it reminds you about the hereafter furthermore it is mentioned when anyone passes by a grave of somebody he knew in the world and he makes salam to this person then that deceased person recognizes him and replies to his salam, subhanAllah. Furthermore, it is narrated in the famous book Shu'ab al-Iman that whoever visits the graves of one or both of his parents every Jumu'ah, every Friday, he will be forgiven and will be recorded as a pious person, subhanAllah. The second Khalifa of Islam, Amir al muminin the command of the believers, Sayyiduna Umar al farooq al azam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu once passed by a graveyard and he said Assalamu alaikum ya ahl al qubur meaning peace be upon you O people of the graves the latest news he said to them the latest news is that your widows have married again new people have now settled in your houses and your inheritance has been distributed. Then a voice was heard. O Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, our latest news is we have received the return of the good deeds that we performed during our life. And we also received the benefit of the money that we spent in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we have suffered loss in that which we left in the world. May the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal be upon him 
and may we be forgiven without accountability for his sake. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, look at the greatness that Amirul Mu'mineen, Sayyiduna Umar al-Farooq al-Azim radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that he possesses. He radiyallahu ta'ala an, to the grant of Allah Azawajal, used to converse with the deceased, with the dead people. In the above narration, there are numerous Madani pearls of warning and examples especially for those who are greedy for money and wealth and those who have built lofty mansions and majestic palaces. The worldly home that a person makes strong and tough and which he decorates in the most beautiful of ways, interior, exterior, will not remain with him forever. Eventually, other people will settle in that same home, that same house. People will also take control of the wealth, of the bank balance that he had, that he had earned, he had stored. After death, the only wealth that will be of any use is that which was spent in the way of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has stated in Surah Dukhan verses 25 to 29. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kam taraku min jannatin wa uyun wa zuru'in wa maqamin kareem wa na'matin kanu fiha fakihin. كذلك وأورثناها قوما آخرين فما بكت عليهم السماء والأرض وما كانوا منذرين. Translation from Kanzul Iman. How many gardens and water springs they left behind, and fields and grand palaces and favors amongst which they were rejoicing. That is what we did. And we made another nation their heirs. So the heavens and the earth did not weep for them, and they were not given relief. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers, and listeners of Madani channel, whenever you visit a graveyard, you should stand in such a way that your face is towards the face of the one who is buried there and your back is towards the Qibla in this manner. Now, present greetings as is mentioned in Tirmidhi Sharif. Assalamu alaikum, ya ahl al-quburi, yaghfiru allahu lana wa lakum, antum salafuna wa nahnu bil athar. Meaning, O people of the graves, peace be upon you and may Allah Azza wa Jal Forgive us all. You came before us and we are to follow you. Now explaining the wisdom behind presenting greetings from the side of the grave towards the face. The Imam of the Ahl Sunnah, Allah Hazrat, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, has stated that when a person visits the grave, then stay in front of the face of that deceased person and then advance towards his feet so that you are in front of his sight. Do not approach from the side of the grave towards the head side, as this will cause the buried one to lift and turn the head to look at you, causing some kind of discomfort. Also, try as much as you can to weep, to cry abundantly and make dua seeking forgiveness for yourself and forgiveness for the people who are buried there, the Muslimin. If you cannot cry, then make your appearance seem as if it were crying. It is better to place flowers onto a grave because as long as these flowers, fresh flowers, they remain fresh on that grave, they will keep performing, they will continue performing tasbih, that is praising Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, and the heart of the deceased one will stay comforted. Subhanallah. Similarly, there is no harm 
in placing a sheet of flowers onto the bier of the funeral procession. Fresh and moist grass should not be taken off the top of a grave as mercy descends due to its tasbih. That is, the tasbih of the grass itself, the fresh grass, and the deceased one gains some pleasure and contentment. Furthermore, to remove the grass would be taking away the rights of that deceased. When visiting the graveyard, instead of talking about unnecessary things and remaining engrossed in negligent thoughts, perform Fikri Medina. This means remember your own death whilst accounting and reflecting on your deeds. Remember your sins as well. If possible, with tears pouring from your eyes, frighten yourself by thinking about the adab and the punishment of the grave. Repent and make tawbah in the court of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal and imagine firmly in your mind that as these dead people are alone in their graves, soon I too will be alone in a dark grave in the similar way. Furthermore, remember the following words of a blessed hadith that Kama tadinu tudan As you sow, so shall you reap. Whatever you plant, this is what you will harvest. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyiduna Imam Sufyan bin Uyayna radiyallahu ta'ala anhu has stated in Hilyatul Awliya that عند ذكر الصالحين تنزل الرحمة Subhanallah The mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal descends when the pious people are mentioned. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, when this is the blessings of the mentioning of the pious ones of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, then what would be the level of rahmah and mercy descending at the place where the pious ones are present themselves? Indeed, without doubt, the pious servants of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal even emanate blessings in their graves and the fortune of those who are buried near them also sparkles. In this regard, it is narrated on page 270 of the 561 page book entitled Malfudat e Ala Hazrat, published by Dawud Islami's publishing department Maktabatul Madina. Therein it is stated, I heard Hazrat Mia Sahib Qibla Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali saying that in a particular place a grave once opened and it became possible to see the deceased person, the dead person. There were two rose stems wrapped around his body and two roses were on this dead person's nostrils. His relatives, thinking that the grave had opened due to some water damage, they dug up a new grave at a different place and they placed the body therein. Now, when they looked in, they saw two serpents, two snakes, meaning two extremely largely, large snakes. They were wrapped around this dead person's body and they were biting his face with fangs. The people were stunned, they were shocked. And when that incident was related to somebody whose heart was enlightened, he said, those very serpents, those very snakes were present there as well, referring to the original place of burial. However, over there, he had the closeness to the mazar, to the tomb of a friend of Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, with the blessings of that, his punishment turned to mercy. Those serpents took the appearance of a rose tree and their fangs appeared as roses. As if you wish goodness for your deceased individual, then take him back there and bury him in the original place. When they took him back there, those same rose, that same rose tree and roses formed again. Subhanallah. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, although it is without doubt permissible to bury the deceased with their own family members, 
if one is fortunate enough to gain burial near any friend of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, then this is truly wonderful for that deceased person in particular. Normally it is usual to bury the dead person in the close vicinity of the dead relatives. Imam of the Ahl Sunnah, Allah Hazrat, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, has stated, bury your deceased near the pious people because as a result of their blessings, your deceased will not be punished. Humul qawmu la yashqa bihim jaleesuhum. This is such a group of people that even those who remain in their company are not deprived. It is also mentioned in a blessed hadith that Adfinu mawtakum wastaqum is saliheen Meaning, bury your deceased amongst the pious ones. Subhanallah. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, if it is in our fortune, we should try to do this as well. In close proximity to any Waliullah, any Waliullah's Mazar Sharif in particular, try to make our will to be, to be buried there. We will gain the benefits. We will see these benefits after we die. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us the ability to understand His beautiful deen and grant us the enthusiasm to practice upon the Sunnah, the perfect Sunnah lifestyle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Amin bijahin nabiyya al amin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attar is my guide attar is my guide by the grace of allah attar is my guide my murshid has changed millions of lives the prophetic sunnah he is revived the leader of the sunnis he is our pride by the grace of allah attar is my guide